As the Predators packed up their bags for the summer, one guy that got a ton of attention was defenseman P.K. Subban. Team's only all-star this year. He's certainly the biggest celebrity on the team in terms of international following and all that. He was great in the playoffs. Interesting year after getting traded for the captain and Shea Weber coming in, having to find his spot, fighting through injuries early on, then getting in the playoffs and being a part of this team's best playoff run ever. It was an up and down roller coaster that ended on a high note, and now the future looks very, very bright for PK Subban and the Predators. And the defenseman talked with the media yesterday. Have you recovered? You know, from the loss, settled in a little bit. Yeah, you know what? I think that it's uh, obviously it was tough, but you know, for us, we know. I think we know now, uh, moving forward, the, the difference that it's going to make for us to get those two other wins that um, bring us to our ultimate goal of winning a Stanley Cup. And, you know, there's so many great things to take from this. And I think that the one thing that, that people don't understand about the team on the other side is that, you know, especially through their core players and their core group in, in Crosby and Malkin, I mean, they were there when they lost to Detroit the first time they ever got to the finals. And, um, I'm not sure if it was the year after or the year after that. They ended up beating the same team. I think it was Detroit to win their first Stanley Cup and, and battled through adversity for that too. I think they were down two games or something like that and came back and won. So I think for us, you know, we have to accept it, accept, you know, uh, where we're at. And um, we fell short of our goal, but I think understanding that it's going to take even more and that this experience is a valuable one for us to take that next step. The fact that you guys have such a good four in place and a lot of young guys under contract. Fiala Johansson come back from injury too. I mean, do you feel good as you, as you look ahead uh, towards next year and so forth? Well, I don't feel good. I feel great. I think that uh, when we look at our team where there's a bright future for our hockey club and that's all it is, is a bright future. Um, you still have to put, put in the work um, to justify that and justify the players that have come up through our system that have worked hard to be a part of this hockey club and to be a part of doing something special and we have a short turnaround here, uh, the off season, and that's the only downside about playing late in the June is you don't have as much time to prepare. But that being said, I think that our team's in a great position moving forward. Okay, now that we're approaching the year since you joined this organization, you've spoken about how great it's been for you to become a part of this city, this culture. Is there anything in your year here that has stood out to you that maybe was unexpected when you first got here that you learned along the way? Uh, unexpected would have been a few days ago when I guess there was a lot of talk about me not doing media. I, I never thought at any point this year that I'd be in, getting flack for uh, not being available for media, but uh, that's sort of a, a misunderstanding, I guess you could say. I mean, uh, that's actually kind of my fault. I was supposed to do media the day before the game, and I didn't skate, so I completely forgot about it and left the rink, and then everybody made a big deal. Like, they were trying to... I mean, I haven't done media on a game day, the whole playoff, so I knew I wasn't going to do it the next day, but uh, I, uh, maybe the upsetting part is seeing our media guys take flack for something that really they didn't do at all, so uh, that would be the only expected thing, but other than that, I think throughout our year, everything that came to us was expected. Um, it was expected for us to have to go through a season of where we had to learn um, on how to be a top team in this league, and maybe it didn't happen for us in October, but we stuck to the process and we knew that we were building to, towards being a team that could be a championship team and seeing the way guys battled through adversity and, and that's the bright thing that I take from this team is how we've gotten to where we are and it didn't happen by luck or chance it happened through the work and uh, you know obviously after the trade there's a lot of talk about our team being a championship team and, and uh, through the changes that we made and the acquisitions of the players that we've brought in over the past couple of years uh, and the expectations were high and I thought we handled those expectations well even when things weren't easy for us. Getting used to a new team, same sort of question but for you individually in terms of what you expect maybe. Learn. Yeah, you know, well obviously, you know, I always want to be an impact player and, and have a positive impact on my team both on and off the ice and uh, went through some adversity this year in terms of injuries and something that's never happened in my career and uh, being out in an extended period of time but being able to battle back and uh, work my way into uh, into the lineup again um, as a player that can play big minutes and, and do my job and, and play within my role of, of playing against other teams top lines and, and being a, an all situations type of player it wasn't easy to get to that point again once I was injured but I felt that it happened at the right time for our team and you know maybe most of the year playing at 
you know, 80, 85 percent. I think I'm probably happy with uh, uh, individually where I got to. And I think that I have to keep an open mind that, you know, next year coming in and, and, and being healthy and, and being ready uh, will only help, you know, me individually help this team get to where we want to be. Did you get more comfortable in speaking out, being outspoken, being a bit of a tone setter as the season went on, and especially in the playoffs? Well, yeah, I think that when you come into a team, you you have to find your place and you have to find where your role is and um, and how you're going to help the team and affect the team in a positive way. And I think as the season went on, for sure, you know, I felt more and more as a guy that can be counted on as a leader on the ice and off the ice. And um, I just tried to grow into that as much as I could with already a great leadership group and a lot of leaders on this team. Are you max comfortable now? Or is there still time to... Well, grow into more of that? No, I think next year coming in, it's it, you're not looking, you know, it's not like next year I come in and I'm a different person all of a sudden. I think it's more of you, you know what the expectations are. And I think not only that, not expectations of yourself and from your coaching staff, but the expectations from your teammates of you. And I think that uh, that's going to only continue to grow. And I think the expectations will build and guys will know what to expect from me and they'll expect that every night. Oh yeah, I mean the you, you can't you can't really you know bottle up the the expectations and you know where we got to in a way that people can understand of how it's affected the city and the community and the organization and, and hockey in general in the South and not even in the South but in the world. I think Nashville's on a on an international level now in terms of recognition from a hockey standpoint and a sports standpoint and I think the sports standpoint comes from the support of the fans and how many people have come out to, to support this team and get behind us and I think we've never, some of the stuff we've seen during this run we've never seen in hockey before so uh, it's pretty special to have been a part of that. You ever talk to people who say, you know, I never followed hockey much before this or yes. like that or like now I'm hooked? A lot. So, yeah. A lot of people which is, which is great to see. PK, we obviously don't know what the future holds for Fish. What's it been like playing with him and having him as your captain? Awesome, awesome, and all I can hope is that he's back again next year. Is that not a playoff beard then? Is that the, is that the thing? Yeah, the only reason why I haven't shaved it is because my barber won't let me until I get back home. He says he wants to, to do it properly. He doesn't want me to do a hack job, so i got to wait a couple <laughs> more days. Definitely don't want a hack job. Got to get it done right. PK stylish as always after a good run in the playoffs. When we come back, General Manager David Poyle and Coach Peter Laviolette talking about this run for the Predators. That's next on the Sports Line on News Channel 5 Plus.